Hi, I'm Bill O'Reilly reporting tonight from Southern California. Thanks for watching us. The truth about white privilege, that is the subject of this evening's Talking Points memo. Talking Points does not, does not believe in white privilege. According to the Bureau of Labor Statistics, the unemployment rate for black Americans is 11.4 percent. It's just over 5% for whites, 4.5% for Asians. So, do we have Asian privilege in America? Because the truth is that Asian American households earn far more money than anyone else. Who are Asian Americans? We are third or fourth generation U.S. citizens whose ancestors were brought to work on the railroads and sugar plantations. But our communities soon became the yellow peril, and we were told that we were no longer welcome. Throughout our time in America, we have been told we cannot be trusted, and often our fate has been at the mercy of foreign policy, as the Japanese among us learned when we were imprisoned in camps during World War II. Even today, some of us are considered terrorists, while others are considered spies. At the same time, we carry the burden of the model minority. We are embraced as highly educated and economically successful. But this stereotype hides who we really are. We are refugees, low-wage workers, undocumented immigrants, farm workers, and limited English speakers. We live in California, Hawaii, and New York, but also the South, the Midwest, and small towns everywhere across the United States. We are now the fastest growing racial group in America. Our numbers will continue to grow, and by 2044, we will be 10% of the American electorate. Despite the newness of our community, Asian Americans are poised to assume a larger role in U.S. democracy and influence the future direction of the country. As great as America is, there are many places that we can do better. We have a system that's so broken in so many ways that the movement is about correcting those problems and filling those gaps so that the laws and our policies are as equal and as, as fair and as possible. Now in that world, there's a perception out there that when you talk about civil rights, we're talking black and brown. We have a lot of things in common with other communities of color. Undocumented folks are not the only ones being exploited in the workplace. Documented folks are being exploited in the workplace. Black, Latinos, Asians are all being exploited in the workplace. Lack of resources, healthcare, education, we're all struggling trying to afford education for our children. Our parents are working hard to send you know, their children to, to college, and most of the times our parents can't make it not. We've always been told to just keep our status quiet, keep everything quiet, don't say anything, don't tell you know, anyone because you could either get you know, caught or um, they could put you into jail, deport you. I feel like that, that fear is, is something that keeps a lot of APIs from speaking and I feel like it, that's something we have to overcome. I want to see fair and just immigration reform. I want to see uh, universal health care and fair education. I want to encourage APIs to speak, speak their voices because if you don't, you're not going to, you're not going to be able to make change. Say, uh, sabi ni Ana sa akin, uh, I'm gonna, uh, magtatrabaho ako bilang isang supervisor. So, nung dumating kami dito, uh, pinatrabaho niya ako na naglilinis sa apartment niya. Tapos, uh, nagluluto ako ng pagkain nila. Tapos, nagsiserve ako ng pagkain nila. Tapos, uh, nag-garden kami sa garden nila. First uh, five weeks, I work 12 to 15 hours a day seven days a week. Anna told me that uh, we're not supposed to get overtime pay because of our visa. We don't, we don't know much about the law, so just follow what, what she said and continued working for her. Anna asked, uh, sinabi sa akin ni Anna na kailangan magsinungaling kami sa labor 
Anna not threatened me to cancel my visa and send back home to the Philippines and there uh, sued me, ruined my life, ruined my family's life, take everything what I have. Dahil iniisip ko talaga na paano na yung buhay ko dito. Sana hindi na ako pumunta rito. <laughs> I came to the America as the promise for a better life and to help us to provide a better future for my kids and opportunities which we which I never had. I grew up with a father who was a missionary and so the idea of public service, community service was something that was just inbred in us. I realized very early on that our lives are not living in isolation, that we are connected to each other, that we are our brother's keepers. So in that world, we have to be part of a coalition because no one person can do something on their own. Now is a crucial moment in our nation's history with race, immigration, and income inequality in sharp focus. Because of our rapidly growing population and increasing influence, Asian Americans have an opportunity and an obligation to tip the scales of justice in favor of those at the margins. Asian Americans Advancing Justice is doing just that. As five independent organizations, we are united as Advancing Justice because together we are louder, stronger, and more powerful. We fight against discrimination, profiling, and exploitation. We fight for all immigrants, for people of color, and for our right to vote. We fight to tell our diverse stories as we fight for access to education to jobs, to health care, and to housing. We are building a more powerful Asian American community through our youth, our community partners, and through our networks across the nation. Together, we educate, organize, advocate, litigate, and unite. We fight for our local communities and raise a national voice. Together, we are advancing justice for all Americans.